Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon. <laughs> ah, I need to come up with better introductions to my segments, but I really can never think of anything. And I feel like if you just start talking, it's too abrupt. But anyways, it's Saturday afternoon. I just came back inside from washing the outside of my car. Well, mainly the windows. I really don't care about that much on my car. Um, the front bumper area is filled with bugs and insects, but I don't really care about that because for the longest time, I never, ever, 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 ever cleaned my windshield or my windows. So there were bug guts all over it and there's just so much stuff that you see little specks around and it's not just clear. So before Montana, I wanted to make sure that I had a clear windshield. So I didn't really do anything fancy. Originally, I was like, oh man, I have to buy bug remover and all that shit. But no, I just went outside with um, a dishwashing scrub <laughs> and I just kind of got all the guts off and I just used water and that seemed like it worked out fine. I'm pretty glad that I got that done because that's something that I've been wanting to do that I haven't in years. <laughs> Today has been a bit of a messy day because of Dota. Um, so the Disneyland major in Paris started at 1 a.m. and VP played first, so I was awake for that. I pretty much went to bed at 10 o'clock and I napped for three hours and then I woke up and I watched. VP won both of their series, so they are going to be in the upper bracket, which is fantastic. And then LGD played around 8 o'clock, but the thing is by then, I'd say by the last game of... VPs, which was around five, uh, 6, 7 a.m., I was crashing really hard. So I didn't really watch that many games at all, I'd say, after that point, which kind of sucks because, you know, I should maybe go back and watch those games because no one on VP, he is their mid player, he played Storm Spirit. And Storm Spirit is just one of those heroes that's really flashy and very exciting to watch. And he has been not in competitive Dota as often as in the past and whenever he gets picked it's very exciting for me to watch him so no one was playing him for one of the matches that I missed so apparently he did very well because when I was catching up in between sleep I just heard the casters talking about how amazing he was doing so I should probably watch that game and I watched none of LGD's games I needed my sleep I was just not able to stay awake any longer but honestly I feel like my alertness during 1 to 6 a.m. was actually pretty decent. I wasn't feeling exhausted at all. Now I am just trying to make myself some dumplings for lunch and I have horse jumping at 6 today. So this is the Del Mar Grand Prix. I bought tickets for this like a month ago and I think it would be dumb for me not to go. It was 30 bucks total. And it's not that I don't really want to go, it's just that I think with the Dota 2 Major being overnight and me waking up at 1 p.m. after going to sleep, it feels like I don't have that much time to do stuff before I have to go, but that's not true really. I have like four hours or three right now, which I think is plenty. I feel like it's definitely worth going because I have been away from horses for a while. I do have my lesson tomorrow, but I think it would be nice to go out and see that because I have never seen that level of show jumping before, which is probably super competitive. It's really, really nice out today, so I would like to go out. I am heading over to the Del Mar Grand Prix right now. It is almost six o'clock and the tickets say it starts at 6.45. So I'll be there a little bit early, but I'm anticipating a slowdown for parking or traffic. I guess you never know. And it would be nice to be there from the beginning because I've never been to one, so I kind of wonder what it will be like. I'm actually unsure if this is one of the top tier events of horse jumping. I feel like it is because I think right now it's horse week or whatever it's called in Del Mar. And I think this is one of the last events to end that whole string of weeks where there's horse events going on there. So it must be pretty good. 
So yesterday and today, I decided to try to rank up in chess. Obviously, it's not something you do in one day, but for some reason, the idea of ranking up started becoming appealing to me. So let me just quickly explain how chess ranking works. I believe the public matchmaking for chess is poorly done, where if you get up higher in rank, you don't really get matched up with people of your rank and people have turned to private lobbies in order to queue up with people around the same rank that way they don't lose too much if they lose and in order to do that there is a website called QIHL it used to be a discord and now I think Team Liquid turned it into a website so people go there and they do their matchmaking through that and it is pretty all right to use. I think for the longest time for me, I avoided using it because I didn't feel like tryharding rank. I was playing this game for fun, right? And I didn't like the hassle of going through this website and then finding a lobby and then waiting for people to join. So I've always just queued up in regular matchmaking. And basically, if you do that, you basically cap out what rank you can go up to because it just tends to match you with lower ranked people and there's no way you will rank up just simply from queuing that sort of matchmaking because unless you're truly amazing and you make top two or three it still won't matter that much right if you win against a ton of people below your rank so anyways I have been playing through this matchmaking yesterday and today, my first time doing it, and for some reason at first the idea of ranking up was really appealing, but I actually don't think I'm having fun with it playing that way, and I think it's because losses don't feel so great anymore, right? Because your rank is dropping for chess. I don't ever care about stuff like that. If I get last, I never cared. I would just be like, all right, let's queue up the next one. Or if I'm with friends, I'm like, great, I lost. So let me take this time to do some exercises while they're finishing up this game. But if I do this ranking system, then it makes those losses matter. And then I think that contributes to it not being as fun. But at the same time, I could always just not care so much about rank, right? But if you are playing the game to rank up, I don't think you could entirely view it that way. So it's interesting to me how that one tiny shift of wanting to rank up has made the game not so enjoyable for me. And I don't know if this is something else that other people are experiencing, but I was getting extreme FPS drops earlier, which also makes it terrible to play because when you get huge lag spikes at the beginning of every round, it sucks because your shit is blowing up. And I doubt it's my computer, but I didn't, I've never experienced drops like that before. I should try to not obsess over that. I don't think I'm going to play for rank, honestly, because who cares? It's really not worth it. I think rank only matters if you're a streamer and you need to appeal to people. I am back from the Del Mar Grand Prix. <laughs> I just see random Milo ears above the chair armrest with no face. It looks really funny. But yeah, anyways, Holy shit, I am so bad and I underestimated how cold it would be. It was so cold and the arena isn't even indoors. Uh, so it was so cold and I had to leave after two hours. But honestly, the first hour was just felt like such a waste because they did this little sponsor event where like six riders would do like four jumps and then they would go in a Land Rover and drive around cones. So that was so freaking, I didn't want to watch that shit. But honestly, I don't know if I'm going to go to horse events anymore because they're actually really boring to me. And to be honest, I don't even like the horse world all that much. I just like to ride horses. So 
I think that's just something I learned. Just not gonna waste money and time at those events anymore. I think the main thing I tend to think about when I go to those places is I would like to jump. I feel like I could be good at jumping, but I also am not interested in spending that money. But I feel like my build and my body type is really ideal for riding, whether it's like being a jockey for racing or even for jumping because I'm light. I do finally get to ride tomorrow. I am really looking forward to that. It's been so long and I don't like that feeling of taking so much time away from riding unintentionally and then going back to it. So it feels like I have to catch up a little bit when I'm on there and then get used to it. Tonight, I wanna watch Apocalypto. I've been talking about this movie a bit or maybe not in video form, but I've been thinking about this movie a lot and I've been meaning to watch it over. So I will watch that tonight and there are more dota games starting at midnight and 1 a.m again but none of them are my teams because vp they were at the top of their group so they're not going to play lgd will be playing at around 11 a.m and team liquid which is another team that is very popular and enjoyable to watch they are playing at 4 a.m i probably will just try to watch once i wake up i don't want to do this overnight thing unless it's for vp or maybe lgd i'd say Ugh. So much hair on the couch. So I am back from my riding lesson and I got an acai bowl from this new place. Pretty decent, pretty decent. So while I'm waiting for people to finish their auto chess game, I want to talk about Apocalypto because I finally watched it yesterday and it was just as good as I expected. I was thinking that I kind of find the Mayan civilization rather fascinating because one part of the movie that they were showing was their human sacrifice rituals and it just blew my mind how they do this elaborate display of brutally killing someone and then they carve open their stomach and then they remove their heart and then afterwards they behead them and throw their head down the pyramid and it's crazy to think that everyone in that civilization is totally cool with this going on or you would think that they are maybe the ones that aren't cool probably just don't really participate or they're silent about it but still a large amount of them embrace it and they're also really excited over it or they're happy about it or they believe spiritual things about it like they showed this one woman with her baby at the base of the pyramid, wiping some of the blood of the head onto her child's forehead. And I was like, Jesus Christ, these people. <laughs> so that was one aspect I thought was really cool. Well, not cool, but fascinating. And I, I actually would like to read more about Mayan civilization and all the different aspects because they seem like interesting people and I've never, ever, ever, ever thought about them much at all. Like I know of their existence, mainly from school and from that small period of time when we were like, oh, Mayans predicted this date, the world is gonna end. So that's, that shit was going around the media and whatever, so you hear about it. When I thought about watching this movie again, it reminded me about how well done this movie was made. Like I am so impressed. I was watching a 30 minute making of Apocalypto video on YouTube uh, before bed yesterday and it was amazing. They are so particular about all the detail they put into the movie. Every single extra that they needed for displaying the city civilization and all of that, those were real people, they didn't CGI it. So that meant that they had like 700 extras that needed unique costumes and makeup and all of their decorations were different like they needed markings they needed to show like scarring and they needed to show jewelry and all that and those were all made specifically for the movie they also crafted the city itself that is really really cool so I loved seeing that about the movie and actually something that is also extra impressive to me is when minor supporting characters are still identifiable as a viewer so what i mean by that is there were a few warriors mayan warriors 
that were considered, you would say, the villains of this movie because they basically take a peaceful tribe residing in the forest and they pillaged and destroyed their home and took them as prisoners to the Mayan city and were hoping to sacrifice them in their ritual. So there were a couple of those warriors that were part of the party that raided their village and I feel like oftentimes for movies like this or what I would view as lacking in characterization is when you don't really know the difference between these characters, these minor characters like the warriors, right? But I noticed as I watched the movie that even though I feel like it's very easy as an audience member to be like, oh, they all look the same, even though they obviously have distinct differences in their makeup or just like the way that they had, I don't know how to explain it, their piercings, right? Back then they had like huge things in their earlobes. They also had stuff going through their nose, stuff going through here. So every single character had different pieces and little differences that helped to identify them. But there's also personality traits you kind of pick up on eventually. So I really liked that anytime you saw a warrior that appeared on screen more than once, Sammy, I'm recording. Anytime you saw a character on screen more than once, you actually picked up on which character this was. They weren't just some random person that was replaceable with another one. You actually picked up on who was who. So that stuff manages to be impressive because I feel like a big fault in movies is when they have people on screen that people dismiss or don't care about or don't even know who they are. Not enough to show and care about them. So that was great. And I don't know, everything about this movie was so good. I, I really like seeing how basic our civilization used to be. Obviously, if you want to talk about Mayan stuff, something else that I tend to focus on is we just don't see a lot of nudity nowadays without it being sexualized, right? And that actually bothers me a lot. Um, anytime I see a sex scene in a movie now, I actually dislike it because I really don't feel like they are that necessary. So for example, I don't watch Game of Thrones anymore, but it's everywhere right now. And you just hear about a bunch of sex scenes on that show and I just don't care. And I feel like they are not necessary to move along the story, but they do it because they want to turn you on when you watch their show, I guess. So the nice thing about Apocalypto is knowing that any nudity you see in that movie was realism. So back then, women didn't wear that much clothing. They were just naked or their boobs were hanging out and it's whatever, it's normal. They don't do it for a purpose, they do it because it's practical. So something that I saw today that was really freaking annoying was something you commonly see on Instagram is some girl showing her tits, almost all of her tits, or they flash their ass, or they take a picture where a body part of theirs is showing that's really, really unnecessary and it's there for seeking attention, right? Sometimes I do try to think through why I dislike seeing that stuff so much because sometimes people argue what's wrong with seeking attention. And I don't wanna think through that argument really, but at least the main difference to me is that I like it when nudity is there casually and when it's not the focus of a situation. So. Social media has completely destroyed our civilization and society because now everyone posts something seeking attention. So even something as simple as these great places like Grand Canyon or um, iconic locations, like when I was talking to Shane about Apocalypto, he was saying how maybe Machu Picchu or some of the Aztec cities or Mayan cities that still have remnants existing they might be degrading because humans are going there and probably mistreating the property to take a picture, breaching barriers and just doing a lot of inappropriate things for the sake of a picture. And it's pathetic. It's so sad. It sucks that we have idiots in our society that do so much just for a picture. And you know what's sad about it is this picture, they don't even care about it. 
they don't care about what they're taking a picture of. Once again, I'd recommend if you haven't seen the movie, definitely watch it. It's very, very, very impressive. It's two hours and 20 minutes, but it doesn't even feel like that because it's so enjoyable to watch. I might be in the mood to watch more movies again because of that experience, but actually right now, let me talk about Dota a little bit more. So second day of the major ended this morning and LGD and BP are in upper bracket, so that's fantastic. LGD is playing at 1 a.m. and then BP is playing at 4 a.m. So they're best of threes two in a row. That will make it really hard for tomorrow for work, but I have to. Those are amazing series, it's upper bracket. You can't miss it, right? It's gonna be the best teams playing against each other in the world and it will be amazing. And actually, someone is beckoning me for chess. It's lunch hour right now. Oh, I'm gonna have a hard time focusing, so forgive that. I am tired because I got like three hours of sleep, probably less than that. Although I did sleep before I woke up for Dota, so I did successfully watch both best of threes that I wanted. Both of my teams went to the lower bracket. I'm quite sad about that. Um, probably nothing feels worse than being sleep deprived, tired, exhausted, and having your teams just lose and play poorly. I'd say LGD just played a really tough opponent. Secret is really, really good right now. Definitely top one or two. So they went to the third game, but VP got 2 0 and honestly, I don't feel like they played well at all. So that was really disappointing to watch. I am largely pretty bummed out about it because it sucks when you wake up to watch your team and they don't feel like they are your team with the way they're playing. I am really tempted to watch the upper bracket matches tomorrow as well. So it would be the same times 1 a.m. and then 4.30 a.m. also. So if that's the case, I should probably sleep when I get home, but that might not be hard to do because I'll be tired anyways. So today I booked my hotel for my drive over to Montana the first night. I'm gonna try to break it up in half, so I really, really do not wanna drive for more than eight hours a day. I booked myself at a hotel and I did call them today to see if they have a freezer for Riley's food and unfortunately their fridges are small like the one I had at Best Western so I had to buy a Yeti today the cooler I do have a cooler but it's so large I didn't really look at the sizing when I bought it I was bad like that so I think it's too large and I also don't feel confident that it's gonna be able to actually keep my food frozen for two days because I will probably just leave it in there overnight when I stay there. Yetis are pretty highly reviewed and uh, I feel like a lot of people use them and they really really like them even though it's probably going to be a lifetime sort of purchase for me where I will be able to use it many many times in the future for other road trips that will make it very convenient. It still feels weird initially to spend like $230 on something like this, especially in a month where I got screwed by my car. So I at least have that part figured out, but now that I have roughly two weeks left for my trip, I am thinking a lot about what I need to bring and everything. And honestly, I think it'll largely be the same, just a bigger suitcase. And I would really like to figure something out for the crate I haven't really figured out what I want to do yet because last time bringing two crates was not fun for vision in my car. I didn't really like it. It took up a lot of space too. So I am just trying to think about what I want to do. I could always just bring one crate, but that would be very, very annoying in terms of disassembling it when I want to use it for driving around that day and bringing her with me and that will be nearly every day. So if I have to disassemble and carry it back and forth to the house and the car every single day, that might be really fucking awful. I would consider buying just the bottom tray for my crate, but I really don't think they let you do that, which is really annoying because that could be very useful for me. 